Welcome to table for 92, element number 59, praseodymium. It's number 59 because it has exactly 59 protons within its nucleus. For praseodymium, probably the most difficult element to pronounce, we're cooking up some Tafelspitz to celebrate the Viennese discovery of praseodymium. Praseodymium. For praseodymium, is not really found in foods and has no biological role in the human body, but since it was discovered by an Austrian, Tafelspitz was the way to go on this one. It's delicious and considered by many to be the national dish of Austria. Praseodymium is the third of the lanthanide group of elements, also known as the rare earth elements, which is not completely accurate. Many of the lanthanides are not actually that rare, but it's that little section of the periodic table, 57 through 71, the lanthanides. Praseodymium is used in a lot of applications, but first off, I want to get into the history of the discovery of praseodymium because it's pretty wild and took nearly a century to really figure out. So I guess you could start this story with the discovery discovery of cerium, the first of the lanthanides to be discovered in 1803, in Sweden of course, where Jans Jacob Berzelius and Wilhelm Hissinger extracted what they thought was a new element. It turns out that they had indeed discovered something new, but it was impure and actually was a mixture of cerium and other elements that hadn't been figured out yet. Fast forward to 1839, another super famous Swedish chemist, Carl Gustav Mosander, while studying cerium oxide, discovered what he believed to be a new element, lanthanum. But while word of his find got out to the world, Mosander was strangely quiet about it. Turns out he was still working on that cerium oxide because he thought there was something else hiding in there. Finally, he comes out saying later that not only has he found the new element, lanthanum, but also didymium. So big round of applause for Mosander. Wonderful, great. Yeah, turns out you probably never heard of didium, right? That's because it's not a real element. Chemists started kind of hypothesizing there was something going on there towards the end of the 1800s. In Prague in 1882, the chemist Boislav Browner was looking into this and was able to determine the atomic spectrum of this didymium was not of a single metal, but it was the Austrian Karl Auer von Welsbach in Vienna in 1885, just a few years later. He was the one who successfully separated didymium into the two elements elements that actually made it up, praseodymium and neodymium. Meaning from the Greek, praseodymium means green twin and neodymium as new twin. So yeah, they took a really long time to nail down what was going on with the lanthanide group. Actually, praseodymium wouldn't even be extracted into a pure metal until 1931. So it really shows how difficult it is sometimes to separate these elements from the minerals and compounds they're found in. I mean, when the first, you know, like kind of discovery of praseodymium happened when C Ethereum was found in 1803. The earliest form of communication in the world was like a letter being taken on horseback or a carrier pigeon. By the time praseodymium was actually made into a pure metal, you could send a telegraph pretty much anywhere around the world instantaneously. It's just insane. All the elements in the lanthanide group are pretty similar metal. And you can see this in the applications of how these metals are used. Praseodymium, just like cerium, is used in the flints that aren't actually flints in lighters. And like lanthanides, praseodymium is used in professional lighting and photography. One of the neat things too is that praseodymium and neodymium are used together in certain applications. So even though the name didymium has been rejected as an element, it's still used when the two metals are joined together. So in like welders and glass glassmaker's goggles, for instance, both metals are used in the didymium glass because it helps filter out the yellow light from the flames. So, pretty interesting. Praseodymium, definitely the hardest element to pronounce. You know, it all sounds Greek to me. Delicious, yeah. Bless the Germans and the Austrians in this case for putting applesauce with things it really shouldn't go with, but man, it really adds a lot. Like the sweet and savory is great. So, 
the lanthanide group is very interesting, but with praseodymium, I think the history of its discovery is my favorite thing about it. Plus, Tafelspitz is awesome. Thank you. See you next time. This is a cool show, right? You like this show? Just click that subscribe button. Just clickety-click.